Do you think the fountain pen hobby is growing or shrinking recently? I know there's a lot of buzz about the Kakuno being a fantastic starter pen, and just from holding mine, I definitely agree, and the Pilot Metropolitan before it, but are there really that many newcomers buying these pens? What might this say about the possible future of the fountain pen industry? Great question. I'm obviously very interested in this subject matter because my livelihood depends on it. Um, when I started getting into fountain pens seven years ago, a little more than seven years ago actually, um, I originally had this vision of getting more new people into fountain pens. That's why I do the videos. That's why we focus so much on affordable pens. Yes, we have a lot more expensive pens now that would definitely not be considered newbie pens, but that's really kind of where we started out. And uh, it was always been my dream to get new people into fountain pens. That's really what was the motivation for starting out doing this. So pens like the Kakuno and the Metropolitan really excite me because they're high quality pens that are relatively affordable that um, will be really great introductions to the fountain pen hobby. So as far as how many people are actually doing it, so I can't speak to like definitively on the industry as a whole because for one, I don't know how big the fountain pen market is. It's a very much a niche interest and with niche interests like in interests with niche interests like these there's not always great data out there about how many fountain pen users are there especially in the US because that's primarily who we serve how many fountain pen users are there how many fountain pens are sold in the US every year how many you know a lot of the companies that are selling these things like Edison Keras Customs Noodlers all that they're privately held small companies. There's not information out there gathered about how many of these pens actually sell. You know, so at best you're kind of guessing or getting summaries or some kind of estimation about how many fountain pen users there are and stuff like that. And there's just not a lot of solid data that I found anyway about it. So I don't know definitively how it's been going. I purely have to go based off my gut and the interest that's generally been around. From talking to people, well, from having been in the industry now myself for seven years and then talking to people that have been around for even longer than that, it's definitely kind of a commonly resonated thing that there, the uptick and in interest in fountain pens has been real over the last five to 10 years. You know, there were, they had somewhat of a heyday in the 90s and early 2000s with limited editions and certain brands and things like that, but the rise of the internet has really helped the fountain pens in general, um, especially recently for getting new, you know newer people into the hobby because you can watch videos like these. You know I can publish these videos, you can watch them, you can learn everything that I've learned in a relatively short period of time, and that is definitely going to help the hobby, right? So yeah, I would say that pens like these definitely help. Information sharing like this, you being able to watch videos like these, definitely helps. Um, and that has been a much more common thing to have happen in the last five years, 10 years. Um, as far as how much of an impact, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know that one specific pen like the Kakuno or the Metro really changes the whole situation because it's really, it's one pen, really. There's a lot of different brands, a lot of different pens out there. I think it's kind of a drop in the bucket for the market as a whole, um, but certainly it helps to generate the spark, the interest, the passion for it, uh, and I would say it definitely has a very positive impact. But it's not like, you know, we're only one retailer, and there's a lot of retailers out there, not just online retailers, but brick and mortars and stuff like that too. Um, I would say probably the majority of pens that are sold still in the US are brick and mortar. I don't know that to be sure, but I think there's a lot of stationery stores, bookstores, things like that. Those have maybe not been so much on the rise in the last uh, several years, except for the ones that are starting to sell online, you know, and are able to kind of manage both. Um, but for sure, I would say the industry as a whole is probably on the upswing, and that um, a lot of that is driven by companies that are getting more into entry-level pens. Um, thinking of brands specifically, whether it's whole new disruptive brands like Noodlers or Twisby, Keras Customs, you know, Tactile Turn, things like that where they've come out of nowhere and are, you know, selling high quality pens in relatively affordable ranges. Um, 
you know, whereas there's other brands that have kind of aged with their demographics and have uh, cut out a lot of their more affordable pens. I see that more commonly with pen brands that get acquired by larger conglomerates and that they're not kind of driven by passionate pen users. You know, they don't necessarily, it's, it's like any niche, you know, business of any kind. You know, if it's acquired by a larger kind of parent company that doesn't seek to understand really those users and, and continue on the, the niche hobby, then they're kind of just gonna age with the people that have already been interested and maybe not come out with as much new stuff, not as much exciting stuff, and it's gonna kind of stagnate a little bit. That's where it leaves opportunities for newer companies to come about and fill the gap, a la Twisby, Noodlers, et cetera. I think that you know companies like Pilot, which you're recognizing right here um, with both the Metropolitan and the Kakuno, Pilot's done a really good job of having some of the higher end stuff available, and especially when you get into Namiki and all that, but also keeping interest in the less expensive stuff to get new people into the hobby. You know, a lot of brands have done that. Lamy's done a good job of that. Pelican's done, Pelican's got a good like range of kid pens and stuff like that. Pelican has a bit of a gap in the middle there. Um, but uh, you know, there's lots of brands that can kind of have both, right? But I think it's really important you know, maybe not like upon the immediate launch of a pen like the Kakuno, it's not gonna change the whole world. It's not going to, you know, save Pilot, you know, from, you know, whatever. I don't know, they're not in a position needing to be saved. I don't know where I'm going with that, but, you know, I mean, it's not like it's not gonna change Pilot the year that they come out with the Kakuno, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna keep it fresh, keep it interesting, introduce new people into the hobby with a pilot pen, for an example, going with the pilot example. And then as they get more into the hobby, if they do, a lot of people drop off and get into other interests, but people that really continue with fountain pens, they then would look at, oh, okay, how about the, you know, Custom 74, or how about the Vanishing Point? How about the Custom 823? How about the Namiki pens? You know, they would stick with the brand because when you introduce someone into a brand, into their fountain pen world with a high quality, affordable product, you tend to get a lot of loyalty by doing that. So I am always pushing any of the vendors, any of the manufacturers that we're dealing with to say, can you guys please come out with some good intro level stuff? It's what's really needed and that's what's really gonna help to keep new people involved in the hobby. So yes, I would say to kind of answer your question, it's both kind of yes and no. Does it really make that big of a difference? I would say that like no, no one's retiring at Pilot over these pens because in order to make them so affordable, they have to drive their costs you know, or their profitability, but I don't know this for a fact, but I would imagine they are pricing them lower and sacrificing on profit to try to get these pens out there into more people's hands so that more people are getting introduced into the hobby. I don't think that this, there's the same, you know, margins on these more affordable pens as there are on some of the higher end pens. That would be my guess. But I don't 100% know from a manufacturing standpoint. That's just uh, my assumption because anytime you're dealing, and now we're getting into like economics and stuff, anytime you're trying to reach volume and get introduced in the stuff, usually the way you do that is by lowering your margin so that you can get more stuff out there and generate more interest. So usually lower price means higher volume, you know, go figure. Economics 101, right?